Let's check in with the listeners. Hey, listeners. <laughs> Listeners, remember you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at ign.com, just like Michael did. I always, I just always assume you're gonna say Big Tony style. <laughs> <laughs> Not this week. Uh, Michael says, it is a wonderful morning for us all indeed. In less than 40 minutes, ukulele reached its 170,000 pound goal, and in less than 24 hours, it has hit every stretch goal with over a million pounds. It's at a point where the company is pulling out Slightly random goals to motivate people to keep donating. I have a question though. In fact, it's the title of this email. Does the Kickstarter project actually represent the demand for that game? I say that because if you look at the backer statistics for ukulele, you'll see there are a couple thousand that pledged in the hundreds of dollars and about a hundred who pledged thousands of dollars. And also there are a lot of people that see the backer bonuses like that. Like, if you donate 15, you'll get the game on Steam for free. Anyway, that's a confusing sentence. Ignore that one. Just curious, does Kickstarter success show a game would have been successful if a publisher had released the game? Mm. That's his question. That's difficult to say. Uh, I do think that the, the number of people that went for this, even at about 40,000, which was the, the figure I saw, I think, a few days ago when we were talking about on Beyond, that's still a very small number of people for, for a video game. Although mm. companies like Atlas... To purchase are, a video game. Yeah, to purchase a video game. But They're, not for funding a Kickstarter. So yeah. if there's a relative comparison to be made, it went so fast, we know all it went fast, mm -hmm. and that it, it went really much higher than their stretch goals. Like, that's totally... Compared, that's an apples-to-apples -apples comparison with with another game getting funding on Kickstarter. We're Absolutely. starting to see more and more. There have been some high-profile Kickstarter failures, you know, mm -hmm. games that just you know, took the money and run or weren't able to develop a game. But we're seeing yeah, more like and more games. Yeah, the Silicon Knights one. E e e e well, e I, I meant games that got funded and then yeah. never released. Oh, right. but, but that's not the point. The point is we're seeing games that raised a huge amount of money and then launched successfully, like Pillars mm -hmm. of Eternity and Shovel Knight. And Broken, Broken Age. Age. And so we have this like body of data to draw on now that there were a lot of question marks before. And one mm -hmm. of the things we didn't know was, you know, 70,000 people funded Pillars of Eternity. So when that game launched, are they going to sell one copy of it? Like, does anybody care? Like, yeah. didn't those 70,000 people that still like hardcore computer RPGs, you know, fund it? And the answer turned out to totally be yes. Mm -hmm. Like, they sold a huge number of copies mm -hmm. and were a top seller on Steam for weeks. And uh, Broken Age also was a success. And Shovel Knight was an overwhelming success. Yeah. Um, and FTL is another example of a game that was like that. So right. uh, I think ukulele, I don't think that, I think that the number of people that fund it on Kickstarter is proportional to the number of people that will end up buying the final game. Yeah, you know, numbers looking that way. Yeah. Numbers like the people who fund it on the Kickstarter, numbers close to that can make like an NAS or an Atlas game a success right mm -hmm. there. So, I mean, that's another thing. Team size and your, your initial budget matter a lot, too, and they had that factored in. But I absolutely agree with you. I think this is going to sell really, really well once it's available. Because once you see, you know, yeah. these are the people. Maybe if it's good. Uh, assuming, uh, assuming, no, I don't think they're Jerry Petty, IGN.com. Well, the big yeah. caveat here is that all these games I mentioned just turned out to be great. Yeah, you know, so that's assuming that ukulele delivers on its promise. It yes, is a well-made video that, game that and gets brings good up reviews. A, a more interesting question too is like, are these games becoming great because they have so much fan participation, enthusiasm, and and somebody just kind of overseeing the production that's like that really cares about the game and not about you know. I mean, ruining actually, it to make a multiplayer mode or, or, or take out the fun? Well, ukulele does have multiplayer. They well, have no, their stretch goal, but no, I know what you mean. Yeah. An example of like as a, the, the, our market game. research shows we have to yeah, add multiplayer exactly. to our game. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I don't know. I think it can almost be kind of the opposite, where Kickstarters can sometimes be almost catastrophically successful. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Tim Schafer and, and company and Double Fine caught a lot of flag for, for Broken Age costing you know, twice as much money and taking more than two times as long as they said it was going to take. But when their funding goal is four hundred thousand dollars, they're like, "Look, we're going to make a little tiny point and click adventure <laughs> yeah. game. Yeah. It's going to have some funny jokes and this sort of pixel art style, and it's going to be really cool. You guys will like it." But then they raised so much money that they felt like, "Well, okay, now we need to make a real game." And mm -hmm. like, all the money in the world can't let you make a project that's that much bigger. You still have to have all your phases of production, and yep. it just stretched out the amount of time it took them. So sometimes I think they have to scramble to uh, deliver on the stretch goals they promise, and uh, it might be better if they didn't you know, make 10 times more money than they were asking for in some instances. So for ukulele, I have two other ways to gauge the success of that game. One is uh, Buzz in the Office, and by that I mean Marty uh, flipped out. <laughs> so did I. And other people. I know you guys are excited too. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I bring this up all the time. I think a 3D platformer is exactly what we all want and need, and I think you did a Game Scoop topic on that. Mm -hmm. Um, Exploration for, for people that just haven't played one a long time. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, but then the other thing is IGN traffic, and like honestly, like ukulele is like one of our most popular stories. Yep. So mm -hmm. people really care about this game. So fear not, Michael. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, there are still legitimate criticisms of Kickstarter. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to take anything away from those, but I'm a big believer in Kickstarter, and I think some of those criticisms or some of those concerns are starting to fade as time passes, where mm -hmm. one of the big concerns was that uh, these independent publishers would have to live Kickstarter to Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got $4 million to make Pillars of Eternity, but then uh, the game launched and no one outside of Kickstarter bought it, so now we need to launch another Kickstarter mm -hmm. to earn enough bread to put on our tables to make Pillars of Eternity 2. But um, you know, if you deliver on your promise and deliver a high-quality product, it turns out that that's not the case. It's a case of these developers can kind of have their cake and eat it too. You know, have the fans fund their game and then you know, go on to sell a bunch of copies on top of that when it releases. There's a couple things about ukulele that surprise me. First is how similar, it, I mean, I know that they're <laughs> making... Title yeah. screen? Yeah. Burp, 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 it's burp, burp, so Banjo-Kazooie. It, uh, it just almost seems like I'm surprised they can get away with it, mm -hmm. with making they something They may banjo, they're the artists. I know, but like, yeah, but they don't own the license game. anymore, and like... Mm -hmm. It's their game. I, well, I, I think just, they, I, I think it's they cool. have the right side of that argument. I'm that just yeah. surprised. Yeah. Well, that, but like, not the legal, <laughs> legally no, right but side. If no lawyer is coming and saying, all right, let's shut this down. made Empire Strikes Back with somebody other than 20th Century Fox, he would have every right to do that. Yeah, but George Lucas can't go make Star Wars now. He can't make he can't make Star Battle. People do that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean it is. It's the minds of creative people making a creative thing that they completely owned in their brains at one point, and not and not it wasn't owned by a corporation. I actually, I, I it's very very close. The music especially. Mm -hmm. is yeah. Like, oh yeah, that's, it's I mean, really it's funny. Just, yeah, it's dead on. We'll just call it evocative. Yeah. About that. What's the? It happens all the time, like Wasteland, like Fallout. Oh yeah, right? Wasteland and Fallout, sure. But that, in that situation, that those two actually share a kind of a genetic lineage, uh, that same way. But yeah, well, Wasteland Two well, was able to I come mean, out and the do same the same thing exactly. Um, Wasteland Two comes along and really is kind of Fallout Two Point Five, uh, and that, that's what they were going for to create a sequel to Fallout Two, uh, really, rather than a sequel to Wasteland. It's actually so, yeah, very different than Wasteland. That's What's true. That? Wasteland Two is very different than Wasteland. Yeah, it's more totally like is. Fallout. Mm -hmm. Totally. The other thing that surprised me is that. Nintendo didn't want to, you know, pick this game up. Mm -hmm. That just well, seems like the perfect fit for Wii U. It can come uh, out on a Wii win U. for them. Yeah, but like Nintendo could have published it themselves. And there is some yep. talk of making a tier of their Kickstarter uh, an amiibo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's pretty good. Because now they're just. I think they're trying to think of other Kickstarter. Yeah. Tiers, Do they even have any say in that? Like, how can they? We're well, making an amiibo. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> pick up the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's totally what it, well, exactly what would happen, I would imagine. It, it is exciting to see the, uh, a 3D exploratory platformer come out. This is kind of like what would happen a decade ago with 2D platformers when they'd all but vanished. And then suddenly uh, people that grew up on them got old enough to get credit cards. Yeah, and it's not a coincidence. Yeah, like was, If you were oh, 10 years old timed. when you were playing Super Mario 64 and Banjo-Kazooie, you're old enough to be making video games now. Absolutely. Yep. And I, I, I love seeing that happen. That's, I really do. I think it's good, for, it's good for the industry. It's good for the hobby. So I think there's so much pixel art in games now. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. developers but, that grew up. But now it's gonna be that's gonna be yeah. phased out for a chunky PS1 style. Polygon. I can't, yeah. I can't <laughs> wait. Big mittens. That yeah, will be big awesome. mitten hands. <laughs> Terrible texture caches. Yeah, uh, no. it's just gonna be. So what's gonna be fog? Like, Remember fog? Yeah. 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 How about garage shading? That's actually pretty good. I'm what's good with that? Garage, garage shading, like what like they did with uh, Super Mario 64, the way that they shade the pixels instead of texturing them. Mm. I have to see it. Uh, fog is cooler. Fog. Uh, what are, what's what's happening right now that people are going to be nostalgic for? Uh, microtransactions. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> Angry yeah. Birds in like 20 years, all these physics games are going to come back? Well, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did you see the story today about how they settle on the name Ukulele? It no. was so good. Uh, so obviously, you know, it's ukulele is an instrument that yeah. the that sort of banjo because we style. I have one right here, David. Yeah. Uh, but also in Hawaiian, they said someone picked up a Hawaiian dictionary, and apparently, yuku means a small-brained person, yeah. and lele means to fly or excitingly to get off of a vehicle. It's perfect. So it's like two of them. Yeah. Wow. We should have yeah. fact-checked that because I bet yeah. they just made it up. Well. Probably. I'm gonna go to Hawaii in July. I'll find out. Okay. Yeah. Just ask a Hawaiian. <laughs> yep. No. Wiki comes from Hawaiian too. I didn't know that. I knew. Yeah, that. and if you go to Hawaii, there's a, a like well, at least on the Big Island, there's a mart called Wiki Wiki Mart. Yeah, it's that's like pretty a 7 good. Seven Eleven. I think it means fast. I don't know what it means. Sorry. 